Hello, I'm Chris Williams from Read Comics, They're Bad For You, the name of my YouTube channel. Or if you're watching this on BitChute, the name of my BitChute channel is Comic Freak. Today we're going to be reading this article. Chewbacca actor fires back at toxic fandom thanks to Rise of Skywalker haters. Yes, we're going to do another article in Star Wars as if there's really anything else to do lately but do more Star Wars videos. Now, I can't help but think while I was reading this article that the actor Jonas Sotomo was put up against a wall by Disney themselves and told to read these lines and basically sound like you're against the toxic fandom that's, that has loudly been rallying against Star Wars Episode Nine: The Rise of Skywalker. Basically, we want you to come out and say that you condemn them because we need all the help we can to try and promote the latest movie. Let's come along with me and read this article and see what Chewbacca has to say about the toxic fandom, huh? Star Wars has been immensely popular at the box office over the last week. Plenty of people online have had both positive and sometimes negative things to say about Star Wars, The Rise of Skywalker, and where J.J. Abrams chose to take this final story in the trilogy. Now Chewbacca actor Jonas Sotomo is furring back at toxic fandom in the wake of some Rise of Skywalker haters. Uh-huh. And I'm sure he's doing this out of his own free will. And he's not being led by his nose and being told that this is the proper response to this so-called toxic fandom, right? You're not telling him what to do because he's your employee, right, Disney? As part of a recent Twitter thread, Jonas Sotomo responded to a Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker theater goer who did not have kind things to say about the female portrayals in the new movie. He did not hold back in his comments related to the criticism. You mean female portrayals like Daisy Ridley's Rey, who was a Mary Sue and no one could relate to her at all? So we can't criticize Rey's character, even though everything about her is intolerably annoying, right? Toxic fandom is built on the same straw man that this thread is abundant with. Deceptively insinuating to be a fan, this writer uses misleading claims to sow confusion amongst people who want to enjoy a story for what it is. Please find better things to do. Peace. Peace, huh? Sorry, Chewbacca, but sometimes people and movies need to be criticized, okay? Jonas Sotomo, who is 6'11", mostly known in the industry as the guy bringing Chewbacca's signature Wookiee sounds to life, certainly has opinion about the Star Wars universe and how it is perceived by the public. In general, and in particular, toxic fans, the actor made it clear that he's not here for the negative comments with his own take. It really doesn't matter what his take is. He's going to receive criticism and his co-stars as well because The Rise of Skywalker was a bad movie and people are going to criticize you for that. To be fair, the Star Wars fandom isn't always angry or toxic. In fact, at the time of this writing, the prevailing hashtag that is training is... Well, I'm not going to read that. Thank you. Uh, more like, uh, well, F you, J.J. Abrams. The next bit in this article is a total load of hogwash. And most fans of the franchise are honestly and legitimately thanking the director of Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker for introducing characters like Rey or for bringing closure for each of the characters in the new movie. As I said, total hogwash. Most people don't like Rey. And for bringing closure for each of the characters in the new movie? You mean like Maria Trans's character? who was barely in the movie, what kind of closure does she get for her character? Or how about Chewbacca himself, who ended up getting a medal for what happened 40 years ago, when he and his friends blew up the Death Star? Now that all of his friends are dead, I bet that medal is feeling really good in his paws now, isn't it? This isn't the first time a Star Wars actor or even someone involved in the movies has spoken out about the haters. However, most people reading this story likely know about Kelly Marie Tran quitting social media after backlash of her Star Wars The Last Jedi character. In a new update, a lot of people are now mad her character isn't really in The Rise of Skywalker all that much, thereby proving how much of a lost loss proposition Star Wars can often be. The ones who are actually angry about Kelly Marie Trans' character basically being cut out of The Rise of Skywalker are the ones who basically do nothing but talk about SJW politics online and or tweeting it out on Twitter. 
That's all they really do. And these are the only ones who actually care about Kelly Marie Tran because it gives them something to grandstand about on their pulpits while they try and tell everyone else is racist but them. As for Junis Sotomo, the actor has spent time over the past few days trying to bring about positivity towards Star Wars and the new movie. He's noted the Millennium Falcon is still a magical experience, even though it's old hat by now, and that he feels this movie is final and epic. Most hopefully, this is the final Star Wars movie, for Disney at least, because I really hope this Disney trilogy is basically put in the vault and never released ever again. The Millennium Falcon is still a magical experience, huh? Do you mean the one at Disney World? The one that basically is the only real ride that Disney has because the other one keeps shutting down and not working? You know, the Rise of the Resistance ride, and it needs such a stupid name for it as well. They're not really the Resistance. The Resistance died when the last movie came out in this series. You know, The Return of the Jedi. That ended the Age of the Resistance. What we have now is a poor imitation. As this final Star Wars movie in the current trilogy heads into its second weekend, it's likely there will be plenty of additional opinions thrown out into the universe. But as fellow new and flak-tacking property, the Witcher showrunner Lauren S. Hedshurst mentioned the other day, criticism is fine, but it needs to be constructive. Remember, even if you are a fan who is now coming from a negative place, there's a reason you loved Star Wars enough to feel that strongly about it. There are a few franchises that can inspire this much talk, care, and consideration. It's in fact still something special to be a Star Wars fan, no matter where you stand on the new movie, plus there's always Disney Plus's The Mandalorian to fall back on. You can say Star Wars is inspiring as much as you want, but it's now a Disney property. They killed the franchise, and... People are leaving the fandom left and right. It doesn't matter that Disney Plus's Mandalorian is a good show. It's going to get good reviews and people are going to watch it, but longtime Star Wars fans as well as new ones don't really care about the fandom anymore. And in a few years, Star Wars will just be another property that Disney currently owns but can't do anything with because they will have completely milked anything out of it worth watching. All we have now are the last dregs of a dying franchise, which is the Mandalorian. And that was only because the director and showrunner of the Mandalorian, John Favreau, is an adamant Star Wars fan of the original trilogy, and I don't know if he likes the prequels, but he is into the original lore of the Star Wars universe. So he gave out a good show. You can't say the same thing about J.J. Abrams and Roundhead Ryan Johnson or Kathleen Kennedy. They say they love this property, but they only love it so they can put their agenda politics into it. And I don't understand that. Do they actually believe in these agenda politics? Why are they putting such things into Star Wars in such ways to make this show or movie bomb? In my opinion, it looks like they're just trying to foul up this franchise because they want it to fail for whatever reason. Because... I just don't understand why they're taking a cash cow property like Star Wars and destroying it. They killed that cow and now Disney is going to suffer in the long run for it because they spent $4 billion buying it from George Lucas and now they just have it on their hands and, well, as it looks like, it's just going to go sit and rot in a corner somewhere and no one's ever going to touch Star Wars again. The Mandalorian is basically the canary in the coal mine. It's the last dying breath of this franchise that, that sadly many people once loved. But because Disney has it, it's just going to sit and rot. It might, well, mellow on for a few more years before finally dying, but that's how I see it's going to be. If you like this video, subscribe. Make sure you're still subscribed because YouTube is currently doing a subscriber purge and an ad revenue purge. So make sure you're still subscribed. If you're watching my videos but you have not subscribed to my YouTube channel, read comics that are bad for you, please subscribe to it. Then go over to BitChute and subscribe to my BitChute channel, Comic Freak. Hit that bell for notifications. Hit that like button and leave some comments down below. And if you could, could you also please share this video? Share it on Twitter. Share it on Facebook. Share it anywhere you think it'd do the most good because YouTube is not going around currently 
promoting their own YouTube creators. And it would really help me if you could please share this video. Now listen closely. Keep checking back in all my future videos for more information on my own upcoming independent comic book scum dogs. I'm Chris Williams, and I'll be back again tomorrow with another video or review.